Hey everyone, Brian here from Native Instruments. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to connect your Complete Control S-Series keyboard to Logic, basic functionality, and how to use Complete Control to unlock the full potential of the keyboard. Now that we've installed all the necessary software, let's set up the keyboard with Logic. Using a USB cable, connect one end into the back of the keyboard and the other end into your computer. If you are using an S88 Mark II, you will also need to connect the included power supply. Now that the keyboard is connected to your computer, you can now open Logic. Navigate to your Applications folder by going to Go at the top and select Applications. Find Logic in your Applications list and double-click to open. For this tutorial, you can open an empty project. Once the main Logic window is open, turn on the keyboard by pressing the power button on the back. You will see a window pop up asking if you'd like to connect your Complete Control S series to Logic, and you will want to click Connect. Logic will display the Control Surface Setup window, and you can see that Logic has identified the Complete Control S series keyboard, and now we are all set. With the advanced integration set up, you can use the Complete Control S series to control various aspects of Logic directly from the hardware. We'll first load up an instrument so we can hear some music, and I'll use hybrid keys from Complete 13 Select. Click on Software Instrument, then click the drop down menu, select AU Instruments, Native Instruments, Contact, Stereo, and click Create. I'll find Hybrid Keys and Contacts browser on the left, click on Instruments, and double click on Hybrid Keys 2.0.nki. Let's record in something using the functions on the left side of the keyboard. You have dedicated buttons for the most important and frequently used functions in Logic. You can first turn on and off the metronome using the dedicated metronome button. Next, you can turn on and off the count in by holding shift and pressing the record button. This will give you by default a four beat count in before Logic starts recording. You can change the length of your count in by right clicking on the count in icon in Logic. To record something, I'll press the record button, wait until the count in, and begin playing, and once I'm done, I'll press stop. Let's loop these four bars by pressing the loop button on the keyboard and press play to listen back. As you can hear, I didn't play the chords right on beat, so I can use the quantize button to lock my MIDI notes to the grid so my recording is on beat. If I ever need to undo or redo an action, I can press the undo button or hold shift plus undo to redo an action. Let's add in a baseline. Back in Logic, I'll click the plus sign, select the software instrument, AU instruments, native instruments, reactor, stereo, and click create. I just want to play an instrument rather than build one, so I'll select Play. For my bass sound, I'll use Monarch, so I'll find Monarch in Reactor's browser on the left and double-click monarch.ens. On the right side of the keyboard, you have a four-directional encoder, which lets me rotate, click up, down, left, or right, and push in to select. I can quickly switch between my different channels using the encoder. I'm currently on my second track, and you can hear this preset when I play my keys. Clicking up on the encoder now switches to my first channel, and now I can play this instrument. If this chain icon is engaged in my plugin window, when switching between tracks, the plugin window also switches. Rotating the encoder clockwise or counterclockwise lets me scrub forwards or backwards through the track. Let's record in this part.
Now that I have two parts recorded, I want to adjust the volume between them. I can press the mixer button on the right, and now the displays show me my channels in Logic. Using the knobs below, I can increase or decrease the volume of each part. I have mute and solo buttons as well that let me mute or solo different channels by holding a mute or solo button and pressing the rectangular button above each channel. If you have a project that has more than eight channels, you can use the left and right arrows to access the other channels. You can also adjust the pan settings for each channel by holding shift and clicking up on the encoder. The same knobs below each channel adjust the pan settings, and for more fine tuning, you can hold shift and turn the knobs below. For more info on the Complete Control S series and Logic integration, click the link in the description to view the integration cheat sheet. In addition to being able to control Logic, if you are using the Complete Control plugin to load your instruments, there's a lot more functionality from the keyboard, so let's take a look. In order to access the other features of the keyboard, you will need to load up the plugin Complete Control. Complete Control allows you to easily browse, tweak, and preview all of your sounds and much more. If you are just loading Contact or Reactor, you still have the advanced logic integration, but you won't be able to smartly browse or tweak your instruments from the hardware. Whenever I want to use a new instrument, I always load up Complete Control first. I'll click the plus sign, select Software Instrument, and in the drop-down, go to AU Instruments, Native Instruments, and select Complete Control. If you don't see Complete Control on your plugins list, make sure that you installed it using Native Access. Once Complete Control loads, you'll see the display on the keyboard has changed, asking me to press Browse. On the hardware, I will press the Browse button, and now I can search through all of my Complete Control supported plugins. Using the knobs at the bottom, I can first scroll through all of my instruments. All of the NI instruments are supported in Complete Control, and also hundreds of plugins from different companies. Their products show up on the display just like an NI instrument, giving you a seamless browsing experience. Let's scroll down and select Ethereal Earth, which is also part of Complete 13 Select. Once it's selected on the left, I can use the knobs on the right to filter my presets list to find a sound quickly. The knobs are touch capacitive, so when I touch the knob, the filtering option pops up on the right display. Filtering refines your presets list, letting you find the sound you're looking for quickly. I'll select Synth Lead and Classic Poly, and the presets list results are now smaller. As I scroll through the presets, you hear audio previews for every preset. NI and NKS instruments, so I know what the preset sounds like without actually having to load the instrument. This filtering system works on individual instruments or across all of your instruments supported in Complete Control. I'll click Load at the top of the screen, and now I can start playing the instrument. Every NI instrument and NKS instrument have all of the instrument parameters mapped to the eight knobs below the display, giving you direct control of your instrument from the keyboard. Many instruments have more than eight parameters, so I can use the left and right arrows to switch between the different pages. Back on the left side of the keyboard, I have an auto button. This lets me enable automation recording so I can tweak the knobs and have those changes be recorded into Logic. If you want to change your preset, you can go back to the browse mode, or you can hit the preset up or down buttons on the hardware. You can also load effects from the hardware and create an effects chain. 
I'll press the button at the top and go to the next slot and then press browse. What you're seeing on the display are all of my effects. In addition to the NI effects, there are also NKS effects such as waves or isotope. Just like instruments, I can filter for a type of effect that I'm looking for, like a distortion effect or something creative. Once it's loaded, I can use the eight knobs to customize the effect and use the left or right arrows to navigate through the pages of parameters. When running your instruments through Complete Control, you also have access to the Smart Play features such as Scales Mode or Chords Mode. Scale Mode allows you to choose different scales so you can never play a wrong note on the keyboard and is also a great learning tool. Pressing the Scale button enables Scale Mode and holding Shift and pressing the Scale button allows you to edit the scale. The knobs at the bottom let you choose between a wide range of scale banks and different scales. No matter what note I play on the keyboard, I will always play in key. I can change the root note and also change how the scale mode works. I can set this to guide mode, which just visually shows me the notes in the scale using the light guide, but still allows me to play notes not in the scale. Map mode shows me the notes of the scale, and if I play the wrong note, Complete Control automatically corrects it to the correct key. Easy mode changes the scale to all white keys, making it easy to play in key. Chords mode lets me choose between different chords and play them with a single note. I have harmonizer mode selected, which builds chords like major, minor, or sevenths, or I can do chord sets, which are pre-made chord progressions. I can jump around the keys and come up with cool chord progressions. You can combine scale mode and chord harmonizer so that the chords you play are in key. In addition to the light guide helping you with different scales, the light guide will also show you different info depending on what instrument you have loaded. If I load the instrument West Africa, the different colors represent different drum hits and different patterns that I can trigger. Another smart play feature is the ARP mode. Just like scale, Pressing the ARP button turns on the arpeggiator, and holding SHIFT plus ARP lets you adjust the settings. Using the knobs, you can adjust various aspects of the arpeggiator, but you also have four rate slots with the buttons on the top right. These let you quickly switch between different arpeggiator rates. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the Complete Control S-Series is capable of. For more clarification on anything about the keyboard, all information about the keyboard is located in the manual, which can be found via the link in the description. Thanks for watching.